All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to put together some of the interior on the Tamiya Wrecker. We've got the Tamiya parts tree with the seats, steering wheel and column, the dashboard, plus we've got a Tamiya 1 14th scale driver to avoid that ghost driver aesthetic. Having said that, we're not actually going to use the Tamiya dash. Instead, I've got a 3D printed dash with a steering wheel on the right side. It also has little backlit panels for the instrument clusters too. Side by side, the 3D printed dash isn't anywhere near as sharp as the Tamiya one, but that's pretty much to be expected. It's not bad though, by any means, and after some paint and stickers, it's going to be more than good enough, especially when viewed through the cab windows. Now, I'm not sure how far we're going to get today. I might set aside the driver for a separate video as he needs to get put together, then sent off to the truck's owner for some paint before fitting. All right, before we can get going with the interior, we need to take the cab to bits. We'll speed through this as we've done most of it a few times already. So first the cab comes off. Then we have the two screws on the MFC mount so we can move the MFC out of the way. Next is the upper plate with the seat mounts, which lets us get to the screws for the seat mounts to remove them. On the cab, we need to remove the metal grill. So that's the four tiny screws and the two larger screws that attach the plastic insert. Remove them and the grill. For extra access, we're also going to remove the roof, the speaker and the windscreen. You can of course leave them in, but being able to reach through the top and the front does make things far easier, especially when you get to fit the driver. With that done, we can start on the new bits. There's no instructions with the 3D printed dash, but it goes together much like the other Tamiya ones. We've got the dashboard and the two mounting widgets. The mounts are a fairly good fit on a couple of posts behind the dash, but we also need to use a couple of screws that are included in the little bag of bits. The fit of the screws isn't perfect, but it's good enough to work with. We need to be careful doing up the screws as it would be quite easy to strip out the plastic. They only need to be snugged up and not over tight. Since we're not completely sure how well it's all going to fit, we're going to fit it to the cab now and just see how it goes. There's two screws already in the cab that we slide the mounts over and we use a couple of Tamiya flange nuts. Nip them up and we can see how it looks. If we look in through the front, we should find a nice even but quite small gap between the dash and the cab, just big enough for the windscreen to go back in. And well, it looks pretty good. Certainly good enough that once a windscreen surround's been painted, it should be fine. Next on the test fit, we will fit the wheel to the column. There's just a single screw that threads into the wheel. Again, we don't want to over tighten it, just make sure it looks okay. Next, I'm going to take it all to bits again and give the top of the dash a quick sand and a quick coat of primer just to smooth out the surface. Being 3D printed, it's made up from layers and while they're subtle, you can see them. But five minutes with some wet and dry paper takes it all down very quickly. And then with the grey primer on top, you can check to see how smooth it is. Now, since those mounts are only held in with the two screws, I'm going to glue them on too so they can't move. We'll need to refit it to the cab so it's held in just the right position. Then we're going to add a drop of thin Sino to each one, being really careful not to overdo it and glue everything to everything else. Then we can let it dry for an hour before removing it from the cab. Blue tack it to some cardboard and give it a couple of coats with some white primer. Once that's had some time to dry, we can paint the top in some Tamiya AS18 light grey, as per the Wrecker manual. And now while that dries, we can get the seats ready. There's two seats, a left and a right. They're both similar, but the driver's seat has a seat belt on one shoulder. The problem is it's on the wrong side for a right-hand drive vehicle. It's not ideal, but I think the easiest thing to do is remove the seat belt mount entirely. A quick bit of dremeling, followed by some smoothing with wet and dry, will do the trick. The seats now need some priming and paint, and I don't have the exact paints Tamiya want, but I do have enough to make a nice two-tone. While doing that, I've also painted up the seat mounts, wheel and column. Bit of primer, black paint, and a light dusting of lacquer. 
Now, we don't want a purely matte finish or even satin. I find using a gloss lacquer spray can at a long distance gives quite a good effect. The drops of lacquer dry quite a bit on the way to the surface, so it doesn't entirely self-flatten. You end up with a slightly bumpy finish. I hold the can 18 inches or even 2 feet from the part and just do a couple of very light passes before giving it a few minutes to dry, building up 2, 3 or 4 coats. It does waste quite a bit of the lacquer, but I think the effect is worth it. The seats need to get glued to the seat bases. Usually I would use some plasti weld to attach them, but in the past I've had a couple pop loose when attaching and removing the cab. I think the small contact area means the weld isn't quite strong enough. This time I'm going to try some zapper gap, which is a gap filling sino. We'll run a bead along each side before sitting the seat on the top. Zapper gap is thick enough that it doesn't flow too much, so we can just leave the seats for an hour or so to harden up. Next we can reattach them to the base plate with the self tappers, offer it up to the chassis and reinstall its four screws. Then we line the MFC's mount up with its holes and reinstall its two screws. There's still a bit of wire routing to deal with, but for now I think it's tidy enough. After all that, the dash has been painted and had some time to dry. We've got the light grey top and a black bottom with a little bit of lacquer over the top. We've still got to fit the wheel and column, but first there's the instrument windows to pop in. You get two small bits of clear plastic that have some paper protection stuck to them. It's really fiddly, but the paper needs to be peeled off. I found it was quite tricky to get started, but once you've got a corner up, the paper does come off in one piece. The fit in the dash is really tight, so tight you don't need any glue. Just press them in place and they won't be going anywhere. I found using the flat end of this screwdriver made it quite easy. It will press them in until the inside face is flush, so you can't push the plastic straight through. Later on, when we're doing some more electrics, we'll add the backlight panels so the instruments light up too. For now, we'll leave them though, as that's just more wire to get in the way. What we can do is stick on the stickers. Just as with the Tamiya ones, we need to cut them out and stick them to the dash and wheel. Unfortunately, you can't just use the Tamiya ones, as of course they're a mirror image. But I'm sure the included ones will be good enough. And here we are, some time later. I think they look pretty good. The only issue is the stickers don't have a clear back. So the gaps between the air vents and the controls have little white strips. We could separate them, but it's not too noticeable, especially once it's fitted in the cab. Next, we attach the wheel to the column, remembering not to overdo the screw. We only need it tight enough so it's going to hold its position, just done up snug. To fit the column to the dash, we'll use some more zapper gap. A nice couple of spots before fitting the column in the slot. Now, there's not much to keep the column straight, so before the glue starts to grab, we need to carefully eye up the position. As long as it's fairly straight, we will be able to adjust the arms on the driver so he fits in nicely. To be sure we can't knock the column off, we're going to leave it a good few hours to harden up. A bit of patience is quite handy when gluing things together. Same goes for paint. Don't rush it. Now, it's not perfect, but it'll do. It's a fair trade-off for getting a dashboard with the wheel on the right side. Well worth it, I think. We might as well quickly fit it to the cab so we can see it in position. As before, it just offers up to the two screws, we slide it on and add two flange nuts. As you can see, through the windows you can't really see that it's not quite as detailed as the Tamiya parts. We can pop the cab back on the chassis while we're at it too. We won't go all the way though, as there's still the windscreen and bits to add. Plus, next time we've got more custom bits to deal with, so it's going to be coming off again anyway. All right. As always, thanks for watching, like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!